Are humans the only species that use dopamine? And does evolutionary biology have anything interesting to say about dopamine and social media? I meant to actually uh, look this up to make sure, but I believe that dopamine dopamine is at least as old as vertebrates, and it may actually extend far, far uh, older than that into the into the history of animals. Um, so certainly, certainly, it's not just humans or primates or mammals. Um, it's at least all vertebrates, and maybe far, far older than that. Right. But what that means and what that doesn't mean um, is a little bit tougher mm -hmm. of a puzzle. So yeah. um, you get into this with actually Peterson and his, uh, the reason that he is associated with lobsters <laughs> is that his point is that serotonin, I believe, is associated with uh, dominance hierarchies and it goes back to our branching point with the crustaceans. Um, and so his- At least that part goes back. Yeah, right. So his point that. is, this isn't a human thing, get over it, right? This mm -hmm. is a really, really ancient thing. And his point is right about this. Mm -hmm. um, now the problem though, if you want to challenge it is, these molecules are part of an agreement, right? A physical agreement. The molecule, be it a hormone uh, or a pheromone, is a molecule built to trigger a receptor when it hits it because it has the right shape and the right configuration of charges on its surface. It could be anything, right? So you could take dopamine and you could engineer a system in which dopamine did serotonin's job and serotonin did dopamine's job. Yep. And it would work just as well because the point is, well, it's actually like this. When you hit yourself in the eye and you see light, why did you see light? There's no light, right? You see light because those are light receptors and you've triggered them with pressure, but they detect it as light because they send the message to the part of the brain that detects light. And so the point is what it's wired to is what dictates what it does, not the shape of the molecule. The molecule is totally arbitrary. So, so in the case of, for instance, Peterson's lobsters, um, serotonin is both age, is ancient and hierarchies are ancient. And the link between those two also turns out to be ancient, but that third thing isn't inherently true just because the first two things are true. Right. It doesn't have to be true. Right. One of two things. It, it is in this case. Right. But right. it could be that, um, the molecule was associated with hierarchies in lobsters and is associated in, with hierarchies in us, but th that wasn't a continuous process, or it can be mm -hmm. that it was continuous. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. In the case of dopamine, it will serve a very similar function for many, many ancestors, right? So uh, back probably through all of mammals, dopamine is going to play a reward uh, role. Does it play that reward role, you know, in vertebrates deeper than that? I don't know. I, I would guess it probably does. Yeah, that'd be my guess too, but um, I don't know. But it doesn't really matter. Yes, very ancient, not, not about humans in the slightest. Yeah. Uh, so the second part of that question, uh, which we're probably spending too long on these early questions, is does evolutionary biology have anything interesting to say about dopamine and social media? Uh, um, well, yeah. Uh, obviously, a mechanism that causes you to release dopamine captures your attention and tends to get you focused on it. Um, so for example, you know, a would-be lover who tantalizes you such that you feel rewarded for being in their presence, right, captures your attention and makes it harder for somebody else to get your attention. So that can be a game. Now, in that case, it's a natural game and you may have an interest in playing along. In the case of the social media platforms, they have gamified their war with each other. In order to keep you on site, they have figured out how to trigger rewards that shouldn't be triggered in you. So it may be that you should go out and do some exercise and go encounter something real, but Facebook is tricking you into staying on Facebook by making you feel as if you're doing something that's good for you, and it causes self-harm. And mm -hmm. so anyway, Tristan Harris would be the go-to guy on this question. We mm -hmm. should have him on the podcast. Oh, absolutely. For sure. But um, yes, so it does have something to say. Mostly what it says is that this endogenous system is being gamed for somebody else's advantage.